known as the father of country music, the Bluey Yodler. He was the main recording artist in the world at the time. I'm talking about Jimmy Rogers. Hello folks, this is your friend Cesar Benzoni. Welcome back to my channel. This channel is all about country music, musical instrument, and etc. If you like content like this, don't forget to hit that subscribe button to help the channel to grow. Today we're going to be talking about the life and work of Jimmy Rogers, but not Chicago blues player Jimmy Rogers. Not even the pop singer Jimmy Rogers, but Jimmy Rogers. As once said by Bob Dylan, he was the man who started it all. He was the first nationally known country music star, an artist who in only six years recorded more than a hundred songs and influenced uh, artists such as Hank Snow, Lefty Frizzell, Ernest Tubb, Gene Autry, Hank Williams, Bill Monroe, Merle Haggard and many many others. Everybody wanted to be Jimmy Rogers and we are about to know why. Jimmy was born in Meridian, Mississippi on September 8, 1897. He lost his mother at age six. His dad worked on the railroad and he was raised by his auntie. In his childhood, he learned how to play the banjo, the mandolin and the guitar. He won a talent contest at age 13 and ran away with some traveling medicine show at the time. His father got him back and got him working as a water boy in the railroad. Then he did loads of other type of jobs in the railroad, but he was always looking for the chance to make a living out of music. He got married when he was 19 and separated just a few months later. He got married again in 1920. He was so passionate about music that he used to spend almost all of his money in records and tickets to concerts. He joined another traveling show in 1923, performing mainly blues numbers. But some bad news were coming on his way. He lost a six-month daughter. And not long after that, he was diagnosed with tuberculosis, which was the leading cause of deaths in the States at the time. He quit the railroad jobs and went back to music as a last try. He was mainly playing for dancers and joining medicine shows. He moved to Asheville, North Carolina in 1927, looking for some fresh mountain air to improve his health. Around the same time, Asheville had his first radio station and Jimmy was able to perform along with the partner Otis Keek. Otis? Otis Quick. Kui. Otis Quick Candle. Otis Quick Candle. I hope that's the right pronunciation. He joined the Teneva Ramblers, who were a local trio, and with them he had a weekly slot on the radio. Jimmy and another member of the band went to Bristol, trying to get some money to buy a new car to go touring with the band. There they found out that Ralph Beer, who was a talent scout and record producer, and who discovered the Carter family, was doing some field recordings there. Rogers gained an audition with him, but at the same night the band broke up. But he convinced Ralph to perform only him and his guitar. He recorded the songs The Soldier's Sweetheart and Sleep Baby Sleep and earned a hundred dollars that night. In November of the same year he recorded his first hit, Blue Yodel T for Texas. A 12 bar blues with a mix of lyrics he heard through the years, with some jealousy, crime and introducing his trademark, the yodel. T for Texas, T for Tennessee, T for Texas, T for Tennessee, T for Thelma, that gal that made a wreck out of me. He was mixing the African-American blues and the white rural sounds in his music. The song sold a half a million copies. And within months, he was playing theaters, broadcasting and playing with a big vaudeville show. He wasn't bringing the old time sound, he was bringing something new to the audience. While the also popular Carter family was representing more the image of the United family, Jimmy Rogers was representing the spirit of the Rambler. He had that role of the singing star. By 1928, he had more recordings done, including Blue Yodel No. 2. With hit after hit, he was making around $1,000 a month. A lot of money at the time. But money was coming as fast as he could spend it. He once said that money was no good until after you spend it. There is some truth on that. In 1929, he appeared in his railroad clothes on a short movie called The Singing Brakeman. Everybody. 
lucky us because that's the only footage that we can see the father of country music singing and playing his Jimmy Rogers special guitar. In the high of his success, he went back to Meridian in his luxury car and wearing luxury clothes. On the other hand, his health was getting weaker and it was getting hard to tour, but still, he was still booking tours. On the recording side of things, he and Ruff were experimenting with new sounds, uh, new formations, new musicians, jazz bands, orchestration, steel guitar and etc. He partnered with composer Elsie McWilliams, giving some more fresh material for his recordings. In 1930, he recorded the hit Mule Skinner Blues. In the same year in Hollywood, he recorded his Blue Yodel No. 9 with no one less than the growing jazz star Louis Armstrong. Rogers moved to San Antonio, Texas to look after his health. Interestingly enough, there he became the yodeling cowboy, a type of character that would become really popular in the next couple of years in the States. Around that period, he gave a break on touring. His health was getting weaker and morphine and whiskey was of common use to alleviate the pain. He even released the song TB Blues about the sadness of the disease. That spoke to a lot of people that suffered from it at the time. He traveled to New York in 1933 to record more songs. He was weak and had to record mostly sitting down. He laid down six tracks, including Years Ago, which he recorded just like he started, just himself and his guitar. The next few hours were intense as he felt well enough to go to Cooney Island and spend some time in there and went back to his hotel where in the next morning he died at 35 years of age. His body was taken on the train back to Meridian with people paying respect along the way. He opened doors for the next generations to come and helped to develop country music as a genre in the music industry. He was the first to be inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame. There's the Jimmy Rogers Museum in Meridian that was founded in 1976, which keeps the memory of the Blue Yodeler alive and which I look forward to visit one day. That was a summary of the main facts. If you want to know more about Jimmy's life and influence on country music, I'll leave some links in the description. Do you want me to do another video like this about another country music or bluegrass artist? Leave the name of the artist in the comments below. Don't forget to hit that like button if you like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel because it helps a lot the channel to grow. And that's pretty much it. I wish you all a lovely day and we'll see you next time.